Welcome to the Peaceful Parenting Podcast. I'm your host, Sarah Rosensweet, mom of three young people, peaceful parenting coach, and your cheerleader and guide on all things parenting. Each week, we'll cover the tools, strategies, and support you need to end the yelling and power struggles and encourage your kids to listen and cooperate so that you can enjoy your family time. I'm happy to say we have a great relationship with our three kids. The teen years have been easy and joyful, not because we're special unicorns, but because my kids were raised with peaceful parenting. I've also helped so many parents just like you stop struggling and enjoy their kids again. I'm excited to be here with you today and bring you the insight and information you need to make your parenting journey a little more peaceful. Let's dive into this week's conversation. Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Peaceful Parenting Podcast. Today we have actually a new kind of episode. We have never done this before and we are answering a question from one of our listeners. I have a brand spanking new option on my website for you to be able to ask me a question. It's just like leaving me a voice memo, basically. And I would invite you to do that and maybe I will answer your question on the podcast. So you can go to my website, sarahrosensweet.com and go to the podcast tab. And on that tab, you'll see a little button that says record a question for me. You can also go directly to the website that's collecting these voicemails. And that is speakpipe. Dot com that's speak s p e a k p i p e dot com peaceful parenting podcast and i would love to hear your questions and maybe i will answer some of them on the podcast today we have a question from suzanne so let's just take a second and listen to suzanne's question hi sarah my question is my son just turned 6 in april and um, he recently began to behave definitely like i tell him the things he has to do beforehand because i know it's better it gives her gives him like a a space for him to decide whether he wants to pick up his toys um five minutes before or 10 minutes before going to bathe and stuff like that right but even so he doesn't want to do what i ask and he questioned me a lot for example Um, I tell him, Noah, you have 10 minutes before bathing, so you can pick up your toys whenever you decide. Or which shirt do you want, do you prefer to wear, the red one or the green one? He still like becomes very rebellious. And I sit with him, I talk with him, but then he goes back to the same thing. And if I say white, he says black. If I say yes, he says no. Or if I say no, he says yes. So I really don't know how to deal with this right now. Okay, Suzanne, I'm so sorry that you are going through this. This sounds so, so frustrating to, you know, be putting so much effort into giving your son choices and giving him some autonomy and you're still getting defiance. And that's just really, really frustrating. Six-year-olds can be challenging for sure. So first of all, I want to say that's great that you're giving choices and that you're preparing him for what's to come. It sounds like you have a strong-willed child, which is probably no surprise to you to hear that, but it's really, really important to give strong-willed kids as much autonomy as possible. In fact, that's one of our three big ideas behind parenting strong-willed kids. They might not all apply to you here, but I'm just going to quickly review them because I think it's good for everyone to hear them, and I know that a lot of our listeners do also have strong-willed kids. So the first big idea is to work on your relationship because Kids, all kids, but especially strong old kids, have to feel close to us and connected to us, and that makes them more likely to want to cooperate with us, and they have to care what we think. The second big idea is to give as much autonomy as possible. That's what I was just referring to. And then the third big idea is finding win-win solutions. A few weeks ago, I taught a workshop, like an extensive, really in-detail workshop on parenting your strong-willed child. And if you missed that, I do still have the recording available for purchase. If anyone's interested, feel free to shoot me an email, send me a DM, and I will send you more details about that, the Raising Your Strong-Willed Child workshop. Um, It's going to go into a lot more detail than we will be able to get into today. But let's see what I can do to help you out, Suzanne. As I said, wonderful that you're giving him choices and preparing and you're saying, you know, do you want to clean up your toys now or do you want to do it in a few minutes because we're going to be having a bath in 10 minutes? You know, do you want to wear the red shirt or do you want to wear the green shirt? So that's great. The thing is that he's still not doing what you ask him to do. So whenever we have with our children, whenever we have an expectation for what we want them to do 
and then we have the reality for what they're with what they're actually doing and there's a gap in between that expectation and reality if you could see me i'm holding my hands you know one up in the air and on one side of me and one up in the air on the other side of me and i'm showing you this gap between our expectations and reality and that's what you're having right now this expectation that he's going to clean up his toys or the expectation that he's going to get dressed and he's not doing it in traditional parenting or more conventional parenting parents use basically fear, you know, yelling, threats, consequences, or the flip side of of threats and consequences, which is rewards, that's what they use to close that gap to between our expectations and reality. If we don't want to use threats, yelling, consequences, or rewards to close the gap between expectations and realities, if we drop out that set of tools of conventional parenting, we have to add in something else. And so what peaceful parenting tools do we need to add in here today? Now, this is just the first thing that I'm going to tell you is just a piece of the puzzle. And there is a part two that I want to get to afterwards. But part one is let's find a win-win solution. So that's what I mentioned earlier. It's one of our big three ideas of parenting strong-willed kids is finding a win-win solution. So as you've mentioned, you know, he, he doesn't want to clean up his toys and come and get ready for the bath. That's what you want him to do. His agenda is probably keep playing and not take a bath, right? So your agenda and his agenda are not in alignment. A win-win solution is a really great way to bring our agendas in alignment with our child's agenda. So what that might look like, as as you heard me say, he wants to keep playing. So a win-win solution in this situation would be, how can you make it fun? So how can you make the cleanup time fun? What kind of scaffolding do we need to put in place to get him to cooperate? Making it fun is what we want to look at in in this case. When we have that gap between our expectations and reality, the peaceful parenting tool I mentioned, bringing in a win-win solution, that's scaffolding or support to help our child meet our expectations. So making it fun, putting on a song, you know, putting on his favorite song or, you know, the latest movie soundtrack that he likes or whatever, and having sort of a cleanup dance party. You could, you know, say, okay, pretend, let's pretend we're cleaning up robots and we're going to clean up, or maybe he's a robot and you've got the remote control or, you know, something that's fun and playful. And I know that it takes effort. It takes effort for us to find that fun, find that creativity. And we have to be at least in a neutral mood, if not having resources, good resources to being in a good mood, but we have to at least be in a neutral mood and it does take energy. It is work. I will not deny that. But it also sounds like it's been a lot of work to try to get him to cooperate without using these win-win solutions, right? Without trying to engage him in play to encourage him to cooperate. And the creativity point, you know, I know as adults, we often have lost our ability to play because we haven't been using it and our play muscles get rusty. Follow what he likes already. You know, most six-year-olds have interests. Maybe he loves, you know, a particular themed show, or maybe he loves you know, certain animals. When my son was that age, he loved monkeys. So we could, you know, pretend to be monkeys cleaning up the living room. Anything that is your son is already interested in, engage in that to see if you can get him to come on board with your expectation, which is that he tidies up. A couple other brief ideas finding for finding those win-win solutions. Increasing connection is always really powerful. So, you know, ah, oh, you know, it's time to stop playing. I know you don't want to. Maybe we have, you know, a quick hug and a snuggle, or maybe you need a hundred kisses, a hug that doesn't end and see if that might make him a little bit more willing to go along with what you're asking him to do and to close that gap between your expectations and the reality of what's going on. Another great way to get kids on board and have that win-win solution is, is to give them something to look forward to. I like to think of this as bridging the task that they don't want to do. So he doesn't want to put his toys away, but maybe you could get him excited about, you know, the bath. Like, what kind of bubble bath are you going to use tonight? Or what are you going to play when you're in the bathtub? Or maybe if the bath itself is also something that he doesn't want to do, he doesn't want to clean up, he doesn't want to take a bath. What kind of thing can he have to look forward to after that? Like, how many stories will you read? Is there a chapter of his favorite book that you're going to be reading? Are you going to have special time after the bathtub? So giving him something to look forward to can be another great way of finding that win-win solution. So so basically part one here of your question is that we've got to find a creative, peaceful parenting tool way to close that gap between the expectations and reality. Choices often work really well, but that's not cutting it in your case. Giving him the choice of when he wants to clean it up 
is not enough because he's just not motivated to clean up. So how can we find that win-win solution, give him that motivation to clean up, whether it's because you're making it fun, whether you're offering to do more connection with him, whether you are giving him something to look forward to, something to move towards. That's what we want to do here to get that cooperation and to, to reduce the defiance that he's experiencing or rather that you're experiencing, the defines you're experiencing. The second part of this question, um, you said that when you say white, he is, says black, um, and that he's just being a little bit, let's say a, a little bit provocative, a little bit obstinate, um, saying the opposite of whatever it is that you are saying. To me, that seems like a little bit of a red flag, a little bit of a warning sign that things in your relationship are quite fraught right now. And again, I could be wrong because all I have is this 90 second recording that you left for me. But often when I have clients who have strong-willed kids, what I find is that when the kids are just really um, being provocative, there are two main things that are going on. One is that the relationship is strained and that the child, uh, no matter how fun you might make it, and what I've seen sometimes, the parents who do go to these great lengths to make it fun and the child starts to cooperate and then realizes they're cooperating and then stops is because they are locked in a little bit of a power struggle. You know, I don't want to cooperate with you because I'm angry with you because things have felt really tense and hard between us. So if it feels like your relationship has been hard for a little while and you think that that might be part of the reason why he's just saying the opposite of whatever you ask him, um, that he's being, you know, sort of deliberately provocative because things have felt stressful or tense or, or fraught, as I said, work on your connection. So maybe forget about for the moment trying to get cooperation, let go of whatever you can, make sure you're doing special time every day, um, make sure you're taking the time to find those micro moments of connection and delight in him so that you can really improve the tone and temperature of your relationship. I think that's what maybe happened is that you're maybe stuck in a little bit of a pattern of fighting and not getting along. So really do all of the peaceful parenting things that you know to do. We'll put a resource in the show notes for some connection strategies that you can use and really just make sure that you are working on your relationship because I think that maybe you've just gotten in this adversarial position with each other and having this bad habit of, you know, the relationship feeling difficult. So that's one thing that can make kids act like that. The other thing that can make kids act like that is when they have a full emotional backpack. If you listen to the podcast for a while, you know that I talk a lot about the emotional backpack, which is a metaphor that was developed by my mentor, Dr. Laura Markham. And it's really a metaphor for our bodies. And it's when we are experiencing things that are difficult, that we haven't been able to process in the moment, tensions, stresses, big feelings that we haven't been able to process and feel and then let them go, we hold on to them in our bodies. And, and our body is that emotional backpack. It's a metaphor for our body. So if he's carrying a lot of like tensions and stresses around with him, maybe school is a little bit hard. Um, maybe you or your partner, if you have one, have been stressed lately. And there are some things that have been building up. Kids will be a little bit provocative in order to find an outlet to empty their emotional backpack. So it may feel like he's picking fights with you because he's looking for a way to offload some of those difficult feelings. Okay, Suzanne, I hope that was helpful. Sending you a big hug. It is no fun trying to move through the schedule with a six-year-old who's not cooperating. If you try some of these ideas, let me know how it goes. I would love to hear from you and maybe in an upcoming episode, we can update the listeners about how this worked out for you. If you, dear listener, would like to record a message, I invite you to go to my website, sarahrosensweet.com, go to the podcast tab. You will find a button there where you can record a message for me. And also, if you're interested in the Strong Will workshop that I did, you can send me an email or send me a DM. I hope to hear your voice message pop up in my inbox. And I will see you next time on the Peaceful Parenting Podcast. Thanks for listening to this week's episode. I hope you found this conversation insightful and exactly what you needed in this moment. Be sure to subscribe to the show on your favorite podcast platform and leave us a rating and review on Apple Podcasts. Remember that I'm rooting for you. I see you out there showing up for your kids and doing the best you can. Sending hugs over the airwaves today. Hang in there. You've got this.